Which is the better blockchain, Cardano or Solana? Which is the better opportunity? Which one will ultimately make investors the most money? Well, that is the topic of this video. So far this year, Cardano is up over 900% and Solana's gone up over 13,000%. So both has had crazy growth in 2021. At the time of this recording, Cardano and Solana are neck and neck in the top 10 and they keep swapping positions every week or so. Hopefully by the end of this video, you will understand both protocols better and can make a more informed decision when it comes to investing. And as I find it a bit annoying when a presenter finishes saying both are equal, I will reveal if I had to choose which one it would be. So in this video, we'll be looking at a snapshot overview for each, including the key metrics. Then something really important, the use cases, what is going on with the protocols right now. I'll cover the main pros and cons, and then we'll finish with the summary and my thoughts on each. As always, if you do enjoy anything in the video, then drop a like, always appreciated. Okay, so two of crypto's powerhouses are going up head to head. Is there a superior chain? Is there a clear winner? Ready? Let's do this. So we have Cardano versus Solana. First up, the founders, Charles Hoskinson versus Anatoly Yakovenko. And Charles Hoskinson has an academic background. His background is in maths, highly educated, versus Anatoly Yakovenko, who's most well known for his time at Qualcomm, working it as an engineer for several years. Their consensus mechanism is actually both proof of stake. So they're both very similar there. Where it differs, Cardano's innovation is the Ouroboros platform, which has been built using the scientific method a very strong, robust, peer-reviewed platform versus the innovation from Anatoly, which he says was a caffeine tequila-induced epiphany in the middle of the night. And this was proof of history, where he basically timestamps transactions. Now, to understand this, think about Bitcoin and where Bitcoin and Ethereum use proof of work. And that involves a computer trying to solve a hard equation. The idea is that fake computers can't solve real problems. So because this takes time to solve the problem, to make sure that the blocks are put in the right place, this is why Bitcoin and Ethereum are quite slow. The breakthrough with proof of history is the timestamps. So he's basically able to say which blocks can go in front of the other using a timestamp. And this is why it's so much faster. Next, Cardano's launched their smart contract functionality back in August, and this was about five years in the making. Solana did their soft launch February last year, and they still classify themselves being in beta. When it comes to supply, they both have a fixed supply. Cardano's a lot higher, 45 billion versus 500 million for Solana. All things being equal, a fixed supply is going to be better than unlimited. And I don't necessarily think that such a large supply is an issue. Now, when it comes to speed, this is how they clock in right now. Cardano is doing around 250 transactions per second, and Solana can do up to 65,000. Now, yes, with the Hydra upgrade, Cardano is going to be able to scale into the millions, but then Solana's big bet is on hardware, and as hardware improves, then they too will be able to scale into a million. But I think it's important to know what can they do as of right now. And then when it comes to the average cost per transaction, it's about 40 cents for Cardano and it's fractions of one cent for Solana. So as of right now, Solana is the faster blockchain with a much lower average transaction cost. So on paper right now, Solana's key metrics to me do look stronger. Solana as of right now has crazy fast and cheap transactions, which is what most people have been asking for. But the big question is, well, what about the next five years? I assume that's what many of you want to know. Well, another key thing to look for is what is actually happening with the adoption and growth of the networks. What are the biggest use cases going on right now for both protocols and what are their biggest projects? Well, I've pulled together a couple of clips from each company so you can hear from the horse's mouth the latest updates and what's going on with each company. 
So let's start with Cardano, and this was their own summary from their big conference that happened this year. Let's take a look at just a few. The collaboration between IOG and Aquant focuses on verifying identities and authenticating documents for fraud protection. The ultimate aim? To open up finance and power a real FI experience along with the Tala Prism Input Output's decentralized identity platform. This will ensure that Cardano stays on top of the evolving global regulatory environment while giving everyone access to decentralized finance. DeFi done better. One of the most exciting partnerships announced at the summit brings together Dish Network and Boost Mobile. This collaboration aims to use the blockchain to unlock value for Dish Network's 11 million TV subscribers and 9 million wireless users, while bringing decentralized identity into the mainstream. At the end of the summit on the stage at Laramie, Wyoming, Charles Huskinson brought on a special surprise guest. Along with Coty CEO Shahaf Bargeffen, they announced that Coty would be the official issuer of JED, a new stablecoin for Cardano. Input Output Global sees a decentralized future with entrepreneurs from Africa leading the way. That's why we were thrilled to announce a $6 million fund to support entrepreneurs based on the continent looking to build on Cardano. Now, decentralized finance relies on the ability to access accurate and dynamic information in a secure way. We announced a new strategic collaboration with Chainlink Labs to add additional support for developers building smart contracts for Cardano DeFi applications. Access to real-world databases will be supplied through Chainlink's decentralized Oracle networks, which enable smart contracts execution around datasets such as cryptocurrency rates, election results, weather, and more. Another important partnership we announced, but one you may have missed, was with Oasis Pro. We're joining forces to target the bond issuance market. The point is to create a new trading system which uses decentralization to allow citizens of developing countries to participate in primary bond markets. Oasis Pro already facilitates digital cash for securities transactions, and the addition of the Cardano blockchain will help remove middlemen while cutting fees. On the enterprise side, we announced a partnership with luxury spirits brand Straight Brands, implementing a Tala scan for tamper-proof software which can record and store data securely and instantly verify the origins of its products throughout the supply chain. It's set to deliver 4 million bottles before the end of 2022, which should be more than enough to celebrate. We also saw announcements on the NFT side from the Cardano Foundation with leading esports player Rival, a sustainability venture committed to planting a million trees with Veritree and Emergo's Ken Kadama announced a new $100 million venture fund for building on Cardano. So lots of great projects going on behind the scenes with Cardano from digital identity to their new stablecoin, Jed. Okay, next up we have Solana, and there was a conference that happened just last week, and they too gave a summary update of what's going on with Solana. Take a look. And it has done a ton of transactions. So a bunch of those are votes, and it, that's by design, but a bunch of those are non-votes, they're now application transactions. If you actually look at things like Chain Crunch, um, there's about 700 TPS of just people using the network. Uh, I think that's more than everyone else combined at this point. <laughs> um, the ecosystem has been exploding um, and it's been truly beautiful to watch. And this is what it looked like in, in March, October, this is what it looked like. And everyone that I know that's trying to keep track of this ecosystem growth is starting to just give up and just focus on summary metrics and, um, and just watch it unfold, um, you know. Um, Phantom has been an incredible um, UX effort to make that initial onboarding of the browser wallet experience as, as slick and seamless and, and easy as possible. Um, and it's just onboarded users so quickly. They actually just, I think, um, you know, maybe 48 hours before Breakpoint started, um, crossed over a million um, wallet ins or extension installs. Um, and NFTs are a thing on Solana. Um, you know, really only started in maybe June. Um, you know, Metaplex is kind of the centerpiece of it. 2.2 million NFTs. Um, you know, it's uh, around a billion dollars of, of NFT market cap on, on Solana. Um, Audius is another, you know, incredible growth story. We first, you know, talked to Raniel and the Audius team when they had, I think, 40, 45,000, you know, waitlist. Um, uh, uh, people and 
you know, they've, they've just been growing like a weed. They've kind of saturated the, the electronic dance music space. It's decentralized Spotify, you know, for anyone that, um, that isn't familiar. Um, and, and another, you know, beautiful story, right? Um, users are sick of uh, having their music taken down on all these platforms, having, you know, DRM rights expire and the, and the music goes away. Solana devs, this is like the heart and soul. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's, it's growing like a weed. It, it, it seems like developers love Solana. Uh, that, that is also shown in, in kind of the, the team formation. It's not just people poking around and, um, you know, and forking uh, code bases. They're, they're building businesses. This so let's cover the main pros and cons for each. So we'll cover three pros and I'll just cover what I think the biggest weakness is. Starting with Cardano and the pros. First is it's a really strong, robust, peer reviewed, solid platform that's taken years in the making and very well thought out. Number two, Cardano does have a very strong community of investors. And you'll notice as well, whenever there is a downturn, Cardano's price seems to be very resilient. The price doesn't go as far down when compared to things like Solana. And number three, I do think there is a lot of potential with Cardano. And it's really interesting to see how it flourishes over the coming years. And I would say the biggest weakness of Cardano for me, I do find it quite slow moving. So it took over five years to get the smart contract functionality live. And when it comes to the projects and developments, I personally wish that they could move faster as cryptocurrency is a lightning fast market. And I don't want Cardano to get left behind. When it comes to Solana, biggest pros number one it is lightning fast and i believe it is the fastest blockchain on the market right now number two is the cost you can't deny it's fractions of a penny making it one of the cheapest transaction costs on the market as well and number three are its use cases. So it's already making a massive dent in DeFi. So it's progressing at lightning speed as well. And for its biggest weakness, I would say it is the fact that it did crash a couple of months ago. So there is a question mark on the decentralization and security of the network. Cardano and Solana are two of the big powerhouses in the crypto market right now. Both have seen ridiculous growth in 2021 so far, and congratulations to anyone who managed to get in early. First up, the similarities. I do think they both have great platforms and a lot of potential over the coming years. Both have a similar market cap, so they're both very similar in size. So the question is, is one going to be a better opportunity over the next few years? Well, ultimately, I have to say it's still too early to be certain on either. I do think both have a great chance to be massively successful and both can be successful together in parallel. However, if you held a gun to my head and said I had to pick one, it would have to be Solana. I personally do value businesses that can move and implement fast. The fact that Solana is already doing incredibly well in DeFi, currently number three in total value locked, where Cardano is still nowhere to be seen. And the fact that Solana is super cheap and super fast right now without the need of any further upgrades does swing it for me. So there you are guys, hope you enjoyed. Which chain do you prefer yourself? Let me know below and why. For now, just to say, if you did enjoy anything in the video, then drop a like and a big thank you to everyone who does. If you haven't yet subscribed, then click below and join us. Got some great videos coming up that you don't wanna miss. Okay, cheers guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.